Hi, this is Kendrick with worldmedicalschool.org. Today we're going to talk about schizophrenia. This is a disease that uh, affects about uh, half of a percent of Americans, so somewhere around uh, two or three people from my high school actually have schizophrenia, although my high school seems like it was probably a little bit overrepresented. So the main characteristics of schizophrenia include positive symptoms. Those are the, the outward symptoms that we can see that we'll talk about. Negative symptoms, cognitive impairment, and mood symptoms, and anxiety. So we're going to talk more in depth about the positive and negative symptoms, but the cognitive impairment, usually this means uh, they're slower to process things. Mood symptoms are often involved, but if they're the pr uh, predominant feature, then uh, it's going to be a different diagnosis, and we'll talk about that too. And then anxiety can be a part, is often a part of it as well. So the positive symptoms are the ones that we typically think about when we think about uh, psychosis or schizophrenia. So often uh, delusions are involved. And they can be either bizarre or non-bizarre, meaning the bizarre ones are things that, that really aren't going to happen in real life, and non-bizarre things could happen, but they're just not true in this particular instance. For example, the bizarre ones are uh, when you think that uh, you are Jesus Christ, and the non-bizarre ones are when you think the IRS is after you, which they probably are. Grandiose delusions like the like thinking you're Jesus Christ. I talked to a patient for about an hour today who believed he was Jesus Christ, and he would fall into this category. Um, paranoid delusions, nihilistic uh, delusions are less common. They usually involve uh, um, a patient having delusion that they no longer exist or are dead. Uh, erotomanic involved uh, believing you're in a relationship with somebody that you're really not. These ones often lead to restraining orders. Disordered thoughts and speech are an important part of positive symptoms. These are the uh, people who are telling stories that don't make sense sentence structure that doesn't mean anything, sometimes words that don't mean anything. Uh, they call that neologisms. And, uh, and sometimes uh, they exhibit something called word salad, which is just a jumble of words that don't connect to each other, which I also heard today um, in a, a lawyer who doesn't have a previous history of psychosis, so she might not fit into the diagnosis of schizophrenia. Hallucinations can be uh, tactile, sometimes sexual, uh, auditory, visual, olfactory, gustatory also can happen, but the most common are auditory. Auditory are also the most uh, common to respond to uh, medical treatment as well. The negative symptoms are the ones that are actually uh, said to be most associated with poor quality of life. So these people have a flat, blunted uh, affect or an emotion, so they, they don't really show any emotion. The four A's, alogia, anhedonia, asociality, avolition. So these people are not able to, to really speak well. They don't enjoy anything, they don't uh, desire relationships, and they don't have any motivation. So the differential diagnosis for people who exhibit these symptoms um, can include a lot of things. The most common probably are the bipolar and then the uh, uh, other mood disorders. So bipolar disorders uh, can have some psychotic features, especially in the manic phase of bipolar. Um, 
but the major difference would, would be that they don't meet the criteria for uh, schizophrenia, which we'll talk about in the next page. Schizoaffective disorder is uh, a disorder that is predominantly characterized by mood symptoms, but has also some uh, some uh, psychosis involved. And then mood disorder with psychosis is a similar one, but uh, in the schizoaffective disorder, the mood symptoms and the and the psychosis can happen at different times, whereas mood disorder with psychosis is a mood disorder like depression where psychosis occurs during the depressive episode. There's lots of medical causes that can cause uh, schizophrenia-like symptoms. There's uh, metabolic disorders, uh, hyperthyroidism, Wilson's disease, uh, and uh, any number of others that I can't remember right now, uh, but there's a lot that you can look up that that can have uh, schizophrenia-like symptoms and, and even uh, would classify as schizophrenia do they would they not have the underlying medical cause. Sleep deprivation is probably the one that caused the, the lawyer with the word salad that I saw today who hadn't had a any history of of psychotic behavior in the past, that he hadn't slept for five days and uh, was presenting with uh, psychosis today. Borderline personality disorder can have some disorganized thought. Drug-induced psychosis can look a lot like this. And uh, there's even research that suggests that uh, drugs can be causative in schizophrenia, uh, especially cannabis has been has been uh, shown to cause schizophrenia. Delusional disorder, uh, I think that was probably supposed to be delusional personality disorder, social anxiety disorder, uh, avoidant personality disorder and schizotypal personality disorder all can have uh, features that look like uh, schizophrenia. So the way that we define schizophrenia is, uh, first of all, we rule out all the medical causes or the drug-induced causes, and then we have to have two or more of, of the following symptoms. So you have to have either delusions, hallucinations, a disorganized speech, uh, which has to to really impair communication in order to qualify, and uh, grossly disorganized behavior um, or negative symptoms. So we have to have at least two of these, or we just have to have uh, bizarre delusions or voices that narrate your actions or um, are conversing in your head. Those things you can't without having two of them. And then um, you have to have social or occupational dysfunction, and it has to last at least six months. Um, and during that six months, you have to have at least uh, a full month of symptoms. So uh, that might not make sense. You have to have one month of symptoms, but it lasts six months. But I think what that means is that the uh, during that period you have to have at least a full month of of symptoms most of the time. So if treatment involves uh, your antipsychotics, the typical and atypical classifications are kind of being shown to not really mean much, but we'll still use them probably for a long time, so we might as well know them. But the the ones that uh, kind of started this whole thing is the Thorazine, the Proloxin, and the Haldol. Those were our earlier antipsychotic drugs. 
and we haven't been able to improve on them yet. Uh, they we haven't been able to make any drugs that are more effective than the typical antipsychotics. But the atypicals in general have fewer extraparameter side effects, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, clozapine has shown to be effective in patients who don't respond to other drugs, but uh, it also has uh, has a potential side effect of uh, granulocytosis. So uh, it's it's only used in uh, in reserve situations, and they have to monitor white blood cell counts. And then uh, olanzapine, risperidone, quetiapine, aripiprazole, ziprazidone. These uh, none of them have really been shown to be better than the others. So, so they do have different side effect profiles. They in most cases are subtle. Uh, common side effects include what we'll talk about on the next slide here. So, uh, forgive me for using this picture in here. Uh, I made this slide a couple years ago, so the picture may be a little offensive to some people, but um, so the antipsychotics have uh, um, some major symptoms or major side effects caused by blocking the D2 receptor. So if we remember right, uh, Parkinson's can kind of be characterized as not enough dopamine and uh, schizophrenia is characterized by having too much dopamine. So Parkinson's drugs often cause psychotic symptoms and Antipsychotics often cause Parkinson's symptoms, so it's kind of trying to balance the, the dopamine. And we end up having to uh, treat the symptoms that or the side effects of the antipsychotics. So, so dystonia, which is those uh, uh, the um, muscular side effects you can treat with benzotropine and diphenhydramine uh, Parkinson's uh, extrapyramidal symptoms uh, you can treat with uh, I guess these are all extrapyramidal symptoms but you can give uh, anti-Parkinson's drugs and anticholinergics and then atrophesia you can give beta blockers anticholinergics and, and benzodiazepines so uh, thanks for the, the picture on the earlier slide, and uh, thanks for your comments. Please make uh, more comments so we can make these uh, presentations better. And if you would like to uh, help out with it, please email me at uh, volunteer at worldmedicalschool.org. Thanks.